Hello everyone, my name is Harrison Evans and I'm the Education Specialist at West Virginia Public Broadcasting. It is so nice to meet you and welcome to my neighborhood. One of my greatest joys in my neighborhood is working with libraries across the state of West Virginia in our Inquire Within program. Some of you may be familiar with this, but I'll give you the short version. Inquire Within gives us an opportunity to bring your favorite PBS Kids characters to life right in your home library. Sadly, COVID-19 has not been fun for anyone, and it has kept us from seeing our friends and getting to do some of the fun stuff that we used to do. I'm here with you right now to give you something that can make you feel better. We have created the Library Pathfinders, and you will be one of my Pathfinders throughout this journey. Do you know what a Pathfinder is? A Pathfinder is someone who goes ahead of others and creates a path for them to follow. I need your help so others can join us on this journey. We have five libraries that are going with us on this journey, but with your help, we can increase the number of libraries the next time we go on this journey. You can visit five of the libraries in West Virginia, all from the safety of your home, and you will get to visit with PBS Kids characters such as the Wild Kratts, Cat in the Hat, Nature Cat, and more. In each video, there will be a code word that you will have to write in your Pathfinder journal. Once you have filled out your Pathfinder journal, send it to education at wvpublic.org and I will send you a special gift. Do you recognize who is here with me? This is Jet Propulsion from Ready Jet Go. Jet brought a template with him to build a robotic arm and materials to build it. Thanks, Jet. All right, so for the robotic arm activity, you're going to need a few materials. Let's start off with those. You're going to need the robotic arm template, two straws, you'll need some twine, then you'll need a big piece of cardboard, and for your tools, you're going to need packing tape, a glue stick, and a pair of scissors. Let's go ahead and get started once you get those materials together. Now that your materials are gathered, let's glue the template to the cardboard. Now that your glue has dried, cut out your pieces. Now that you've cut all of your pieces out, I'm going to show you how to fold one of the fingers. And for this step, you will need a piece of discarded cardboard. So, take your cardboard, lay it up against the first line, pull up from the back of the finger to fold. Now, move that same piece down to the bottom line and repeat from the opposite side. Now that you have folded one of your fingers, I would like for you to do the next three. Now that you have all of your fingers folded, it's time to tape each one of them to the arm. So the first step we need to do is to flip our arm and fingers over. Now that that's done, you need to position your fingers just like this. Now let's begin the taping process. So grab your scissors. We're going to cut a thin piece of the tape off. <coughs> and then apply it to the back of each finger, like so. Then we'll repeat that for the other two fingers. Now that these fingers have been attached on the back, we need to flip the entire design over and tape them on the front. While we are still on the front of the design, now we need to attach our thumb here first, and then we will flip it over and attach it to the back. Now
Now that we have attached all of our fingers, I'm going to show you how to attach the straws. So as you can see here, I've already done one for you, and I'm going to show you how I did that. So you take your piece of straw, get your piece of tape, put the straw in the middle of the tape, roll it on either side until it looks like this. Then you go to your finger, place your straw in the center, then as you can see, I wrap it around the back on both sides. That way, the straw is nice and secure. Now that I've shown you how to do it the first time, I would like you to continue on with the rest of the fingers, but save the thumb for last. Now that the first three fingers have been taped with the straw, we need to move on to the thumb. The first two sections of the thumb are the same as the other fingers, but we're going to do something different on the last part, so follow along with me. So like I said, the first two is just like we've already done. And remember, you roll the straw in the middle of the tape and then wrap it around. <clears throat> But on this last part of the thumb, we're actually setting ourselves up for a future step. So before I put the tape down, I want to show you. Instead of having the straw going straight like this, you actually need to have it come at an angle, something like this. To place it just like this right here. Wrap that piece around the back. And that's how it should look. Now that we've got this piece taped down, we're going to move on to our final step of the construction. And it's going to be right in around the palm. Much like we've done with all the fingers, we're going to take a piece of straw, put it in the tape, and wrap it around the sides. I'm going to go ahead and show you if you want to do it along with me. So then we'll pick up and wrap around the edge. Place the right side down, fold it around the thumb on the back, and then your middle piece is going to lay in the middle and go over top. And when you're done, it should look something like this. Now that the palm section has been done, we're going to move on to the second to last step, which is our support strap. And please pay careful attention in this step because there is a lot of moving pieces. So we're going to take the white side down. We're going to grab our scrap piece of cardboard and using your best judgment, we're going to place four folds, roughly in the same areas that I do. So let's start at the edge and you're going to fold up. Move down roughly the width of your piece of cardboard, fold again, then you're going to mirror it on the back side, the bottom. Once you fold it, you should see that you have four individual creases. Now moving back to our arm with the white side still down, we're going to take a piece of tape and we're going to give ourselves a starting point with our supporting strap. And just to show you the idea of what you're looking at, now that we have these creases, you fold over, fold over again. Before you tape, be sure it looks something close to this. Once we have our support strap taped to the arm, we're going to reverse it and start folding it to the other side. The first thing that you want to do is raise up on our first fold and put tape here to brace it. Once we have our fold braced, we need to take the underside of our tape, put it on the brown end like this. And this is going to make it much easier when you fold the whole piece together like this. Once you have it attached to the arm like this, much like we did on this side with bracing it, we're going to do the exact same thing here. That way it holds its shape. So all in all, at this step, this is what your arm 
should be looking like. The good news is we're moving on to the final step and that's going to be attaching string to the hand through all of the straws. So what I want you to do now is get the glue stick that we used earlier at the beginning of the project and your string. And we're going to take our string and we're going to wrap it around the glue stick and we're going to tie a loop. Now that we have our knot tied, we're going to remove it from the glue stick. It should look something roughly like this. And then going from the top of this knot, using a straw, to the top of the straw, we're going to cut each of our string pieces. Now that we have our string cut, it's time to thread through the pieces of straw, starting right here. Now that you have threaded the string through all the straws, I'm going to show you the next step. So adjust this according to how long your fingers are, but we're going to take the first loop, <coughs> we're going to pull it roughly to about right here, then taking a piece of tape, we're going to attach it to the top of the finger, making sure to get the string stuck down nice and tight. Once you've got it looking somewhat like this, you're going to do this for the next three fingers. Once you've gotten your strings tied together and attached them to your fingers, this is what it should look like. And you can see that when I pull my fingers, there are fingers that are moving. Now, the biggest part of this entire activity is whether or not it can actually hold up to the test. Let's go ahead and try it now. And you can see it's a little bit flimsy, but it's still working. So if yours looks like this, great job. Now that you've finished building your arm, I want to introduce you to the engineering design process wheel. We can use this wheel to refine our design. First, we define a problem. Then we imagine a plan. We create a solution, test it, improve it, and share it. Let's look at the issues we had with our design. Our first issue with the design had to do with structure. As you can see, the wrist has too much flex. The second issue had to do with the support strap. On our design, it was too far forward, making the fingers difficult to control. We defined a problem. Now let's imagine a plan. Having identified two issues, one being the wrist and the other being the location of the support strap in the improved stage of the design wheel, we now have options to make it better. And here is our new and improved design. So the first thing that we altered and improved was the support strap. A fun thing about this process is you can still find other problems in the improvements. We noticed that the support strap was too small and too tight, so we've loosened it up and made it bigger, which allowed my hand to fit easier. We've also made the strings come down lower to accommodate the new position of the support strap. Additionally, we added a spine on the back for support to fix the flex issue. Now, it's not an improvement unless it survives the test, so let's try that now. And as you can see, it works. The good thing about improvements is even if it fails, the fact that you learn something from it is all that matters. Thank you for joining me in my neighborhood, Pathfinders. Make sure to visit all five libraries throughout your journey. Remember most of all to have fun. The code for WVPB is Pathfinder. Don't forget to write this down in your Pathfinder journal. from West Virginia Public Broadcasting.